Within your machine shop, do you ever struggle with? Bill of materials. Sales orders. Gauge calibration. Purchasing. Quotations. Shop floor data collection. Stock control. Scheduling. Quality control. Now, that is just nine of the modules from PSL Datatrack, but we're here to showcase how A&R Manufacturing use a number of modules to bring the whole thing together. Welcome to this week's Wharf and Chips. Mark and I are all goggled up ready for a little tour, but at A&R Manufacturing, it's not just a job shop. What they do is 65% of what they produce is also electronics, and they create a product for the end user. And what's really interesting is when you're taking a look at a lot of these companies, you've got to look at the type of machines that you're actually uh, investing in, yeah. because it's not just about um, a job shop, it's talking about making your own product. So a Mazak turning center, you've got mill turn, on your left hand side We've got here. Martin here as well. Martin, Hello, you all Martin. right, Martin? Yeah, I'm okay, thank you. You, you having a good day? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Disrupted, yeah, I, I like say. that. <laughs> Sorry, Geoff. Geoff's filming as well. Um, now, what's quite interesting, so we've seen a couple of the machines, but whether it be stock, whether it be tooling, PSL Datatrack have the ability to be in control of that so you know exactly where the products are within your workshop, just streamlining the whole business. Also about traceability as well. Yep. But uh, talking about machine tools, um, fantastic uh, an array of products from Herco here. You've got three VM20i machines, three axes. You've got some of the older machines that they've invested in. And it's talking about partnerships. You, you don't mm. buy a machine just because it's good. You buy it because of the service and the backup. And that often happens, and you hear it a lot. One company has a machine and then that continues on and on and on. They stick with the same now, brand because they have good service. Talking about on and on, uh. fantastic the future. This is a fantastic BMX 30 machine, five axes with an, an Aroa system on it. Now this is the future. This is about automation, lights out engineering, and it's very important because this is the future. Right, and it's automation, 48 pallets on here. And did you know that every single product or finished product that you've got here can be for a different job and PSL data track can track that and they can tell you you've got one hour left on that seven hours left but we'll talk a little bit more about that later but before, on. We, before you finish on this one it's all just about traceability and that's what PSL data track actually do especially in the electronics sector you need to have traceability talking of electronics let's go and see Colin upstairs you may have just seen, I am wearing the anti-static foot strap. I can hardly stand up straight, but the floor is an anti-static floor because it's electronics. So we're going to take a little tour. I'm going to find Colin. Now, all of this and all what you're seeing, bearing in mind, is controlled by PSL Data Chat. They have control over all of these products. I dare you to count them. What are you doing? Come on, Lindsay, you've been waiting ages. That is solder paste. So I've learned loads already about this. It's an absolutely fantastic facility. First of all, you've got in here, if Chris can get his little camera in there, this is a shim putting solder onto the PCB ready for the components to go in. So that goes in there. Come on, next step. Now, each of these are individual components. Now, I might not be 100% correct, but you're looking at resistors, diodes, capacitors, and things like that across there. Those are all being popped onto the PCB, the board. Then, if, there, if there's more components, it goes into this machine here. So, working away there. Now, in the distance, you've got the shims for different jobs. Yes. So, loads of different PC boards, PCBs. Now, they're doing work for security, for example. Can't say exactly. The Olympics, Rugby World Cup, things yeah. like that. So, it's absolutely amazing, That's amazing huge. job. That's huge. Now, another set of components here. So you can see, just controlling all these different components. That's what so blows my mind, honestly, Colin, for PSL data track to be able to know exactly, you know, a, a normal walk sh workshop, it will be one block of metal or multiple. Yeah. But they but might have 500 different components in a workshop, but these, you know, there's thousands on each reel. On example. every single yeah. reel. And what's this? Now, this is your reflow. So essentially, now I'm going to barge you out the way here, Lindsay. That's fine. What you're doing, you've got solder paste, you've got components on the board, but it needs to be heated and solder melted. So essentially, you're going here from 96.8, well, it's moving as we talk, heating up, heating up, heating up, until the solder itself actually becomes molten at 280 degrees, then off it cools. And that's how it's working but so it works almost like glue to the solder will be working yep. to hold everything together absolutely but obviously there's well 100 components on each board in fact here's one i prepared earlier yes. they let me loose now what do you reckon on that how many 
components do you think there are on that, Lindsay? Do you realise you have just started a cycle time challenge or a component time okay. challenge? Okay, well, how many components do you think are on there? I have absolutely no idea, so, but let's do it. Let's do this as a component time challenge. How many components are on there? Now, I saw you looking at this earlier, Colin, so how many do you have a well, guess? Well, I'm going to give people a clue. There's more than one. That's it, that's the only clue you're going to get. It's more than but one. I know a man who no, might... No, no, hold on, I'm going to stop oh. you there, Lindsay, because AOI, now, great bit of work there needs to be inspected. Now, they actually go above industry standards on this inspection, the AOI. So this is checking all the components on there, and it's got algorithms that are actually checking the solder to make sure none of it will fail. And if there is a failure, Lindsay, We head over, over to, to here, you. don't we? Do you want to just follow me? What's your name, sorry? Wakara. Okay, then. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Um, so what, 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 what are you doing over here, then? Uh, actually, this, uh, that's the rework area. Whoever was coming up from that machine, yeah. if there go some errors, we're fixing it here. And this is a, what, what's the that's actually, zoom? That's a actually camera uh, where we go 23x zoom. So we can, any smallest thing, we can wide enough and big enough on that big screen and we can rework it easily. And then you can fix it. Thank you so much, by the way. Thank you. So um, I know a gentleman that potentially, this is Jamie, Jamie may know how many components are on there. So um, on that part for our, our not cycle time challenge, how many components are there? There you go, there's your answer, but you're not going to know your answer, are you? I do, you don't, but put your guesses in the comments box below. Right, Colin, over to you. We've just looked at this component. Jeff, this must be, well, a logistical nightmare. So what have you got there? Okay, this is a copy of a job card for this particular board. Um, all the information in, on this card comes from the quotation, which is in keeping with all DataTrack users. You start with a quote. The quote details the process. So we've got the complete process for building the board together with, based on the vast array of materials, all the materials that go into this particular board. Two things though, the quote itself, key to getting it all right is getting that quote, but that's very straightforward using your system. It is, and it can be reused. Lots of data can be copied and so on as well to minimize the amount of time taken to do that. Okay. Now I'm thinking a normal machine shop, you're not gonna, you might do an assembly for example, you're not gonna need that many components. No, not at all. No, it's mostly gonna be one material, one component, this is obviously numerous pieces of material. I won't say how many, but numerous. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a logistical challenge, yeah. but it's a challenge that's dealt with through the system. Okay, so that just shows how strong and powerful PSL Day Track yeah. is. Yeah, how flexible it is, how we can adapt it. Yeah. And then this, this then links into other modules as well? It does. This information will then be used in the scheduler to actually work through the workflow. There's a vast range of jobs running through the machine shop or through the electronic section, both. Um, they've all got their own processes, they've all got their own materials. All of that has to be scheduled and dealt with through DataTrack. Absolutely amazing in terms of controlling you know, all those different components. What's next though, and another big headache I should imagine, purchasing. So let's go and find out more about that. Purchasing is a key area at A&R Manufacturing. They have over 27,000 line parts. Now, Dan, you look after the purchasing side here. Now, tell me how you use PSL DataTrack. Well, PSL Data Track allows us to run reports and status boards for any parts that I need, whether it be um, a minimum um, stock level requirement or for purchasing for a project um, at any given time. And when you look at the pricing element, that must be crucial for you. Oh, very. Because um, the, the price discrepancy in some parts can amount to quite big losses on jobs, we, we have to make sure the, the price on a purchase order um, adds up to what is on the quote. And if it doesn't, it gets picked up by um, accounts and then gets like, thrown back at me to, to work out why the price of stress happened and what we're going to do to, to resolve it. And I, I, I suppose from a cost point of view and cash flow point of view, it's crucial as well. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, we have to try and make sure we're purchasing the, the right parts in the right months for the cash flow. And um, PSL um, helps us do that. And if you didn't have the software at PSL Data Track, what would be the effect here? We wouldn't be able to run without PSL Data Track. Okay, another key component any machine tool, well, machine shop, other machine tools. Your old 20 year Herco there, massive fans because you've got the, the VM20s over there. Your latest acquisition here though, the full five axis with the robot compact 80 system from Aroa. Why have you bought those? Uh, just saw, been working on it for 18 months of where the future of engineering goes, um, what we needed to be doing so we give the customer flexibility on price, flexibility on delivery and turnaround because with the, with the two we're working 24-7, um, we can give the customer, we tend to work very much as partners with our customers on quantity so 
we can give that flexibility so that they don't have to, they can order over two or three years, but if they have changes, it's very quick to reprogram, move forward. So it's just sort of generally covering all aspects of where we go for the future. And you say about the future, you understand the component you've got in there at the moment, previously around nine ops down to two ops? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, uh, it was sort of very much when, when it was sold to me, when I was doing the investigation for what we're going to use, you always sort of looked, spoke with the Herco sales team and they were like, ah, oh, yeah, do everything but and make the tea. And then when it actually was commissioned, it was, and it will make the tea. Brilliant. Well, I'll have coffee, that's all right. But also, with the, with the robot system here, 48 pallets? Yeah, 48 pallets, so you could actually have Four, it's four, you could have 48 different jobs being manufactured in a cycle time. I'm thinking straight away. Interruptible, interruptible uh, programming, so that it just loads up, loads up, loads up. So you could, you could, if they're an hour, hour each job, you could have 48 jobs in 48 hours. Oh, I know, I can say. Like I say, in terms of programming, but you said it, it covers that off in terms of ease of use. Okay, well, I mean, a lot of today has been about PSL day track, and you've got that vision. They're doing things for you going forward as well, because it's a totally flexible solution from them. Yeah, yeah, they will be working with PSL on what we need PSL to link in with the new system. Yeah. And we've worked with them so tightly. Jeff's in here every month, every couple of months, and we're working with him of, Right, how do we do this? How do we get reporting for that? What can we do with this? What can we do with that? So that does tie it in lovely. Yeah, you were saying earlier that PSL is basically essential to your company. Oh, yes, yeah. PSL is now the backbone of the manufacturing process for us. Um, yeah, if you take that away, then A&R stops because it ties every aspect from quote to invoice. It ties it all together. Everybody works around that. And that's what we've promoted with them, is that it's the full, full system. I'm here with Mike and we're talking bombs and not of the bath variety or any other. We're talking about bills of materials. Yep. Now, can you talk us through how PSL Data Track have helped you with regard to this? But also, on average, what is the average quotation size per part that you'll be sending out? So with PCBs, we generally have a bill of materials will be probably about a thousand components. Um, and we just take data the customer provides us, what they want us to use, we convert it to data track part numbers, we then create a bill of materials to quote the customer. If we're successful, that then transfers into purchasing and they can go and buy the parts for us. As simple as that, but it doesn't always happen that way, does it? What if a customer maybe wants to upgrade in a part because that's then going to have a little bit of a ripple effect across the whole quotation? Yeah, we can control, through the Builds and Material module, we can control whether or not a customer wants to change a quantity or even if the specification of the part. It also gives the ability to check if that part's used on any other customer equipment, who uses it, and we can advise them proactively that there are changes. And I know there's been quotations with 5,000 parts on, so that's a lot of information. Thanks, Mike. All right. Jeff, I understand this is a status board which is uh, very bespoke to A&R manufacturing. Could you tell me exactly what it does and how it helps them? Yeah, yeah. So this particular example here, this is a shop floor data collection point. So the idea is from the PC at the bottom, they'll clock on and clock off of different activities, being it setting, production or non-productive time. This board at the top, this will show a live feed of everything that's currently clocked on on the shop floor. The colouring is bespoke to the requirements that A&R requested. So the colours will represent different status. Um, time spent, time left to go and so on. There's a yellow band there that shows non-productive time so they can see if there's, well, the volume of non-productive time that's taking place as well. All key to making sure that the shop floor is as efficient as possible. And I presume this all interacts with the purchasing side as well? It will do, yeah, to make sure that uh, obviously for this to be scheduled they made sure that all the materials were acquired, bought in on time. And I understand we're going to see Colin now talking about a different configuration of a status board. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and there's plenty of those to look at. Mark's been looking at what I'd see as a, a standard status board, really. So a lot of green, maybe a little bit of yellow, a little bit of amber, a little bit of red, or no red at all if possible. But just looking around here, do a quick count, eight different status boards. Yeah, yeah, they're all more sort of management information that's 
they're at my fingertips really. So you, rather than sort of delving into looking into reports, I can just browse up from a desk and see a where invoicing is, where um, the order book is, what the next few months are looking like. Um, then we can pan across from either side of me and sort of CRM information. Um, so there are more management requirements, but the theme is about giving information to people and the information to ourselves. In that case, then, I think you've got about 20 different configurations? Yeah, there's 20, 20 different configurations. Um, is it easy to get, you know, you liaising with Jeff and the team at PSL Daytrack, easy to get those management, those systems in place? Yes, yes. I think we've covered this one in other areas yeah. that Jeff is so closely linked into to A&R through PSL that, yeah, we'll come up with an idea and Jeff has to sit there and create it for us. Absolutely, fa absolutely fantastic. And after a discount as well, I should imagine, after this. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, Lindsay's going to have a chat with Jeff, who's got some breaking news. So just to conclude today's Swarf and Chips before we speak to PSL Data Track about their latest news, Mike, you've been using PSL Data Track for 17 years now. <laughs> uh, tell us about that journey. It's been an interesting one, and certainly within the last six, seven years, we've identified Data Track as a as a key tool to the business. The the ability to invest and create the partnership with the supply chain with Data Track, um, and it, and being able to use it as a tool to invest in the identification of time and loss of time and the ability to analyse data quickly at the touch of a button is paramount to our business now. So you're not having to invest in this machine, this machine, you can keep doing that, but you're getting your time back and you're saving money on that side of things. And you work closely with PSL Data Track. How often is this working? Because you, you've got a tailored product now to suit your company. Absolutely, everything, we get together once a month, we probably chat every week, and we, everything that we have within our system now is tailored for a &R. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Jeff, what a fantastic testimonial. I mean, I don't think you can get much better than that, can you? I don't think so, Lindsay, no, no. <laughs> now, you've got some exciting news. What is it? Yeah, well, we're pleased to announce the 2019 version is about to be released. Mm -hmm. um, 227 wish list ideas have been satisfied in this latest version. That's added 131 new configuration uh, options to the system, totaling now in excess of 1,300, which shows how adaptable the system is. That's without including counts of custom reports and status boards. That's just configuration options. Wow. So that is all your customization. That's you working so closely with your customers. It is, exactly. That's, that's where the ideas come from, Lindsay, yeah. yeah. And what are the new changes then? What, what's the exciting news? Yeah, going through all of them, a couple of highlights. Um, on the main screen behind us, uh, that's a classic view where we just see the logo. If we go to a desktop view, now that's where we get a roadmap idea. So this takes the information flow across the business. Um, so you can see it's going to start from left to right. It's a really good navigation tool for new users. Yes. Um, and you can click the icons to go into the modules. The next view, if we switch across, is a series of statistics, 57 separate KPIs available instantly to whoever has access every time they come into and out of a module within the system. Um, so there's a broad range of valuable information there. It's all tailored to this industry, though, isn't it? It's all tailored exactly to this industry. That's where the feedback comes from. Thank you so much for today, and um, very exciting. But wh when are we going to get our hands on this? September, I want to know. September before Emo in, Hammon, okay. in Hanover. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And, and how do we get in touch with you? What's the best way uh, to do that? Us through our website, uh, or you can contact us uh, via email, sales at psldatatrack.com, website www.psldatatrack.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jeff. Do not forget, as well, we've got that part quantity challenge as well, so put your guesses in the comments box below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>